Hi scholars, welcome back to another day of Read Aloud with me, Miss Luna. And today for Read Aloud, we are actually starting a new unit. Say so cool. Yeah, so the new unit that we are going to be starting today is about nonfiction books. It's about, yeah, so you guys are probably thinking right now, what are nonfiction books? What are they? So, nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. All right, I'm going to do that chat one more time and then we're going to practice together. Got it? So, nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Awesome. So, right now, we are going to practice it together. So, nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Got it? All right, let's practice it one more time. So, nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Got it? All right. Now we're going to practice it all together a little bit faster. So, nonfiction books chant, get ready, go. Nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. All right, we're going to do it one more time just so we can practice again. So, nonfiction book chant, get ready, go. Nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Awesome. So, nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts, while the books that we were reading the past couple of weeks, the fairy tale books, are fiction books, which are made, are made up stories. So, our nonfiction books have story, do not have all the story elements like our fiction books do, because these books are teaching us about facts and in our nonfiction books they usually have the words and the pictures teaching us about the facts that they want us to be learning so that's why it's very important that as we as good readers when we are reading our nonfiction books we look at every word and picture we look at we look at yeah, so when we're looking at every word and picture, it's teaching us more facts about the story. Also, in our nonfiction books, it includes text elements that aren't sometimes in our fiction books. So they might have a table of contents. They might have a, yeah, they might have a table of contents. So a table of contents tells readers what page the sections are on. So, tailable contents tells readers what page the sections are on. All right, now we're gonna practice doing that chant all together. So, first, my turn. So, table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. All right, I'm going to do it one more time and then we're going to practice it together. So, table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. All right, now we're going to practice it all together a little bit slower. So, you guys can be doing this with me. So, table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. All right, we're gonna practice that one more time. So, table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. Awesome, now we're gonna practice it all together a little bit faster this time. So, table of contents chant, get ready, go. Table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. All right, one more time, get ready, go. Table of contents tells readers what page the section is on. Yeah, so it tells you which each section the page is on. That way you're able to go to that page immediately. And then usually on those pages it has 
headings. It has, it has, so headings are larger bold fonts and they usually tell us what the main idea or the topic of that page is. It tells us what the Yeah, it tells us either the main idea or topic. It tells us the That way we have an idea of what we are about to be reading. Also in our nonfiction books, they have diagrams. They have They have Yeah, they have diagrams. So diagrams are pictures that explain how something works. So Diagrams are pictures that explain how something works. So in our nonfiction books, we're gonna be seeing lots of diagrams, which is really cool because they're gonna be telling us about different things and teaching us new facts. It's so cool. <gasps> yeah. Also, in those diagrams, there's gonna be labels. There's gonna be, there's gonna be, yeah, so labels tells what the picture is of. So it's telling us what the picture is, what's it about, teaching us some new facts, which is really interesting. So before we start reading our nonfiction books, we are always going to preview our text. We're going to, we're going to, yeah, we're first going to preview our text because that's what, as good readers, we should be doing when we're before we're reading a nonfiction book. So the first thing that we do is we need to preview the text. We need to we need to preview the text. That way, we're getting kind of like an idea of what we're going to be reading about. While we're previewing the text, we need to be thinking about the main idea. We need to be thinking about the. The main idea is what the story is mostly about. The main idea is mostly what the story is about. So it's what's the story about? While we're looking for the main idea, when we figure it out, we need to be asking ourselves, what do I already know? We need to be asking ourselves. Yeah, we need to be asking ourselves, what do I already know? about this topic or main idea. What do I already know? And then when we're previewing our text, we need to actually go into our debt and our text and we need to skim it. We need to, we need to skim it. So that means we're just taking a quick look at it. I know we've gone over what scheming is. So just quickly looking over it, looking at the pictures, looking at the text, quickly browsing it, not actually reading it. And then we need to look for text features. So we, when we're skimming and previewing our book, we're going to be looking for those labels, those diagrams, those headings, trying to figure out what the main idea is about. So what the story is about. And then lastly, since we're doing all the sticking for information, we need to organize our thoughts. We need to, yeah, we need to organize our thoughts. The way that we're going to be organizing our thoughts is with our KWL chart. With our, that's right, with our KWL chart. So our KWL chart is what we know already, what we, what we, that's right, what we already know about that main idea. So that's why we're asking ourselves, well, what do I already know? And then when we already know what we already know, we're going to put it down in this section. And then while we're looking in our text, we're going to be all, we're going to be thinking about certain things, wondering, well, I want to know about this and I want to know about that. So we're going to put this down in the W section. So what we want to learn, what we what we yeah what we want to learn about this topic about this main idea and then the last part that we'll fill out after we're reading the part that we'll fill out after we're yeah after we're reading is what we learned is 
Yeah, so this is always going to be the last part that we fill out after reading our nonfiction book. So it's what we learned about the story and the facts that it taught us. Got it? All right, so I'm going to quickly go over how to preview our text again, okay? So I'm going to be asking you some questions, so get ready. So what is the first thing that we must do? Hmm, what's the first thing we must do? That's right, we need to preview the text. We need to, and then we need to be asking ourselves one question. What's the question that we need to be doing while we're previewing our text? What do we need to be asking? Hmm. That's right. What do I already know? We need to ask ourselves. We need to ask ourselves. Yeah, we need to ask ourselves, what do I already know? And then our third step. What's our third step? Hmm, what's our third step? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, our third step is to skim and look for text features. We need to skim and look for, we need to skim and look for, yeah, we need to be skimming and looking for those tech features. So right now I want you to be thinking, what are the text features that we should be looking for? What are the text features we should be looking for? Hmm. Let me go ahead and shout out your answers. Yeah, so those text features are our diagrams, our labels, our headings, letting us know about the main idea, what the story is mostly about. We need to be looking for those so it's telling us what our main idea, main idea is about. And then what's our last step? What's our last step? Hmm. Yeah, our last step is to organize our thoughts. It's to, yeah, organize our thoughts. And how are we organizing our thoughts? That's right, with our KWL chart. So what we know, what we what we want to what we want to know, what we and then what we learned. What we That's right. So, today we are just going to preview our text. We're going to That's right. We're going to be previewing our text and using all four of these steps and then filling out the first two part of our charts and then tomorrow we're going to fit we're going to read our story and then we're going to fill out the last part. Got it? Awesome. So make sure you're paying super close attention. Make sure you have those listening ears on. Turn them on if you have to. Turn them on, turn them on. All right. So right now we're just previewing the text. So that means we're not even really reading it. We're just going to Skim, look at the pictures, see if there's any headings that are large and bold telling us what the main idea is about. So, when we're previewing our text, we need to first, of course, look at the title. Our title is Spiders. Our title is, hmm. So, do you guys think our main idea, so what our story is mostly about, is going to be about spiders? I don't know. Let's skim and see. All right. So, I know that we said that sometimes our nonfiction stories have a table of contents. Let's see if there's any table of contents. Let's see. Hmm. Don't see them right there. Mm. So, this nonfiction book doesn't have a table of contents, so it isn't telling us where sections are. But that's okay. We're still going to skim and preview our book and be asking ourselves, what do I already know? Hmm. Ooh, see some cool spiders. Ooh, ooh, scholars. Right now, I just noticed something. I see the word arachnid. Ooh, this one's kind of in like a diagram. I wonder tomorrow when we're reading our story, it's going to tell us what that word means because right now, I kind of don't know what that word means. So maybe that's a question I'm going to be asking myself. 
What does the word arachnid mean? Hmm. I don't know. Let's keep on reading. Wow. Look at this. This has two diagrams. It has... And remember, diagrams are pictures that tell us how something works. Oh, so I wonder if this is going to be telling us how a spider works and how a bee works. Oh, scholars, I've also noticed another text feature. I see the word in large, bold text, a spider's body, and ant, an insect's body. Oh, so these are our heading. They are our... That's right, our heading, letting us know what the main idea is of that page. Ooh, so we're gonna be learning about spiders' bodies, insects' bodies. Ooh, ooh, I see some more words. I see some more labels. Wow. Ooh, I see some more words, I see some more labels. Oh, I see some pretty cool diagrams. Oh, wow. Look at this diagram, scholars. It's probably going to be telling us, um, if I'm making a prediction about it, just looking at the picture. Oh, how a spider makes a web. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Wow. Wow, scholars, this is so interesting. So right now, we're skimming our text. We're looking for those text features. We see a bunch of different labels. Oh, I think these labels are telling us what different types of spiders there are. So we see black widow spider and tarantula. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Oh. So we've just finished skimming and previewing our text. So way to go, us! Yeah, so we just finished skimming and previewing our text. So now our last thing to do is organize our thoughts. Our last thing is to do is... So, like I said earlier, we are only going to fill out what we know and what we want to know. So right now, I want you guys thinking in your heads, what do you already know? What do you already know about spiders? Hmm. Ooh, scholars. And if you want to, if you want to be a super scholar, which I know all of you are, you guys can take a quick little break right now, go get a piece of paper and make your own KW out chart and write down what you already know about spiders. All right, so what's some things that you already know? If you don't have paper, that's okay. You can go ahead and shout out your answers. What do you already know about spiders? All right, scholars, thanks for sharing your answers. I know I'm not able to hear your answers right now, but I put down some things that you guys might have been thinking about what do we already know for spiders. If I didn't put down some of the stuff that you said, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means I wasn't able to hear your answer because we're not in person. So that's okay. So some of the things that we might already know about spiders is spiders have eight legs. Also, we know that some spiders can be poisonous. And that some and that spiders can make webs. Awesome. So right now that we finished talking about what we already know, I want you guys to think about questions that you want to know about spiders. So what do you want to know about spiders? What do you want to know? All right, and if you have your answer, well, your questions, actually, you can go ahead and shout them out. So like I said, scholars, I might not have the questions that you be, might be asking me out loud at your homes right now or that you're hopefully writing down, so that's okay. I just wrote down some questions that we might want to ask, okay? So some questions that I put down that we could ask ourselves are, where do spiders live? How many types of spiders are there? 
And then how big are spiders? Because I was kind of curious about that. I don't know about you guys, but I would really love to know what you guys were curious about spiders. All right, scholars. So right now we've finished previewing our text. Like I said earlier, we aren't going to actually read the book until tomorrow. I know, bummer. So right now I have one more question for you guys. I have one more question. Remember, I want you to be answering this question using your race response. And I would really love it if you guys are able to get a piece of paper and write down this answer. All right. So the question I am going to be asking you is, what is a nonfiction book? What is a nonfiction book? Hmm. All right, scholars, and before we end our lesson, we're actually about to go over what nonfiction books are. <gasps> so make sure you're listening. All right, so we're gonna do our nonfiction book chant. All right, so nonfiction book chant, get ready, go. Nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Awesome, let's do that one more time. Get ready, go. Nonfiction books are books about real things that teach us facts. Awesome job, scholars. So today, we did lots of things. Right now, I want you guys to shout out one of the things that you learned today, or well, that we went over today. Go ahead and shout them out. Yeah, we learned so many things. So we learned about our KWL chart. So what we know, what we want to know, and what we've learned. Remember, we're not filling this out till tomorrow. And we also learned how to preview a nonfiction book. So by first previewing the text, asking ourselves, what do I already know? Skimming and looking for those text features such as labels, diagrams, headings and then organizing our thoughts into our KWL chart. Wow, scholars, I know you learned so much today and it's so exciting. And I can't wait for you guys to come back tomorrow so we can actually read our book about spiders and learn some cool, interesting facts. Oh my goodness. All right, scholars, so that's it for today. Don't forget to answer your question and I can't wait to see you guys back for tomorrow. Bye.